Rating is a critical part of Rust, and it's important to know what you're doing while you're rating so that you can secure all the loot. As a Rust player with over 1300 hours, I feel like I have a generally good grasp on how to raid and what to do in order to have a successful raid. In this beginner's rating guide, I'll show a step-by-step -step process on how to raid and how to be successful doing it. As always, I've separated this video into four different segments, and you can find the timestamps for each on screen now as well as in the video description. One final thing, according to Rust Nakeds, literally 99.7% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed, so if you want to see more Rust content from me, consider subscribing. It's free and you can unsub at any time. Now, let's get on with the guide. There are two categories of explosives in Rust, direct and splash explosives. Direct explosives are satchels, bean can grenades, and C4. They only damage the thing that they're stuck to. On the other hand, splash explosives are explosive ammo and rockets, and they can damage multiple objects at once. For this video, the explosive that we'll be using is satchel charges. This is because as a beginner, it's the easiest form of explosive that you can obtain. They have a 1% chance of spawning in brown crates. The other explosives are all tier 3, and you'll have to find them from airdrops, locked crates, or elite crates. The base that we'll be raiding will be the classic 2x2 with the two loot rooms, and all values that I give in this video will be for the 2x2. I feel as if it's the most common base in Rust at the moment, and it should give a good foundation in order to learn how to raid. As you can see here, this is how a standard 2x2 is laid out. The TC is diagonally opposite from the airlock. Additionally, Rust Labs is your best friend when raiding. You can look up how much sulfur you'll need in order to raid a certain door, or a wall, or anything. I highly recommend consulting Rust Labs when you're unsure on how much sulfur a given obstruction will cost. The link to it is in the description. The first thing you're going to want to do is to find a raid target. If you're still fairly new to Rust, I recommend raiding something no larger than a 2x2. Additionally, I recommend doing it when the owners of the base are offline. I know that some salty Rust nakeds are going to complain about offline raids in the comments, but when you're new to Rust, you need any advantage you can get. When you've found a raid target, look carefully for any weaknesses. This could be a soft side wall or a foundation that wasn't upgraded. Any weakness could seriously reduce the raid costs. Once you've done that, you're going to want to figure out where the tool cupboard is. The TC is the ultimate objective when raiding. If you destroy it, you can seal the breach with your own doors and then safely raid from within the base. For 2x2s, the general rule of thumb is that the tool cupboard is diagonally opposite from the airlock. Then, you'll have to figure out where you're going to raid from. If the base that you've chosen is made out of stone or wood and does not have honeycomb, go through the walls. It'll only cost you 10 satchels as opposed to the 16 if you choose to go through metal doors. On the other hand, if the raid target has honeycomb, go through doors. The honeycomb prevents you from seeing what the internal walls are made out of. They could be upgraded to metal or HQM, and that could be a nasty surprise to find out mid-raid. Next, determine the amount of sulfur you'll need. This is where Rust Labs comes in clutch. For a stone 2x2 with no honeycomb, you'll need 11 satchels total. 10 for the stone wall, and then 1 for the TC if it's locked. Of course, I can't know what the situation is with the base that you're raiding, so you'll have to check that for yourself on Rust Labs. After that, you'll have to go to farm the necessary sulfur. There isn't much to say about this step other than don't die with an inventory of sulfur. While the sulfur is cooking, you might want to set up a raid base if your raid target is far away from your base. A stone 1x2 fairly close should do the trick. Be sure to place down sleeping bags in the raid base as well as in the area. Additionally, be sure to have at least one extra kit for each teammate that's raiding with you. This way, if you get countered and die, you can have a chance at regaining control of your raid again. Once your sulfur has finished cooking, turn it into gunpowder and craft the necessary explosives, in this case, satchel charges. Finally, be sure to have the materials to seal the breach once you destroy the TC. Bring a building plan, a hammer, materials, a TC, a door, and a lock. Now, it's time to raid. Once you get to your raid target, start booming. If you're playing solo, throw all 10 satchels and then stand back and watch for counters. If you're playing in a duo or more, have only one person throwing explosives while the others watch. Also, be sure to not be too close to each other. 
Have one person on a vantage point, have another near your raid base, etc. Once the wall is broken, there are two ways this could go. One, the TC was not where you thought it was, and you'll need more explosives to go further. If this is the case, try to extract whatever loot there is into your raid base, and then go farming for more sulfur to finish the raid. Or two, you've breached into the TC room. Authorize on the TC, or if it's locked, use a satchel to destroy it and place your own. Next, seal the breach so that other players can't get into your raid. If you're in the TC room, you'll most likely be able to soft side pick into the adjacent loot room, saving you some sulfur. While it's unlikely that they log on right when you're raiding, it'll be quite an awkward encounter if they respawn just to find you standing in what used to be their base. Now that the base has been raided, you'll obviously want to extract all of that loot back to your base. Firstly, if the area is active, wait a bit for it to cool down, or if you're a chad, go get some free kits. If you're solo, I highly recommend respawning outside of the raid to see if anyone's camping the door that you just placed. If they are, try to scare them away, and if they don't leave, kill them with one of the kits that you have in your raid base. Next, start transferring loot. I usually transfer only half of a certain item, for example scrap, that way if I die on the way home, I don't lose all of it. Keep transferring until there's nothing of value left. Finally, once you're home safe and sound, enjoy the hard-earned loot. Well, I hope you enjoyed and learned something from the guide. If you did, please be sure to drop a like, and if you'd like to see another guide, be sure to comment it down below. Also, if you happen to have any questions, you can come over to twitch.tv slash mamamisi where I can answer them for you live or you can leave them in the comments. Anyhow, that's been it from me. I hope you have a wonderful day and don't fucking blow yourself up. Hey yo, I just wanna say a big thank you for the massive amount of support this channel has had over the last month. And I also wanna say thank you for a thousand subscribers. I really didn't think I would be hitting that, but I did and we kind of flew past that milestone since we're currently sitting at like 1.15k subs and so in celebration i'll be doing a viewer event in rust so if you're interested and would like to participate join my discord and let me know there the link to it is in the description but yeah thank you so so much for all the support and i hope you have a wonderful day